Hey guys, how's it going? Wanted to do a quick update on the GT200. The uh, VTX has started giving me problems, so I figured it's time to get rid of this old guy. And I picked up, because of the tight space that I have on here, I picked up one of the new uh, Team Black Sheep Nano v uh, VTXs. So, as you can tell, it's going to uh, definitely save a lot of room there. So. Not too, not too shabby. The only issue is I don't have an OSD on the Kamini in this. So doing some research, I think I might have found a way to do it that luckily enough just came out on 3.3 of Betaflight. So I'm going to get this thing all installed, hopefully be able to then configure the VTX channels for this, th for this guy on the uh, CLI of Betaflight. So kind of reading about it, did a bunch of looking and hopefully I'm gonna be able to do this. So stay tuned and we'll see if we can't uh, not make smoke come out. So that's the whole plan. So, all right. All right guys, so I got everything all set up here. Um, pretty basic setup, five volt VTX, five volt from the flight controller, normal VTX and you know, camera hookups, smart audio wire for the smart audio port, and and you're all set. So if you have a Betaflight OSD, you're fine. You know, you're done, put everything back together and you're all set. In my case, the Kambini flight controller does not have the Betaflight OSD configured for it. So I did a bunch of searching and was very lucky to actually run across a GitHub uh, thread where some of the developers were talking about, you know, creating the um, commandlets basically for you to uh, you to be able to adjust smart audio or really send smart audio signals through the CLI, so you can adjust things inside of uh, Betaflight. So that's what I have to do here, and luckily it just came out in this brand new uh, version of Betaflight 3.3.0. So. What we'll do is I'll jump over to the PC, show you those new commandlets, show you how to get everything going. It's it's honestly just as simple as, as VTX underscore band channel frequency, all that good stuff. And um, yeah, so we get everything all set up and uh, hopefully it gives you some answers if you're looking for a way to control a smart audio device through clean flight. So we'll jump over to the PC now and we'll get started. All right, guys. So we're in beta flight here. And all we need to do is connect up real quick. And as you can tell, I'm running the 3.3 version of Betaflight. And one of the things, remember, if you're going to do anything with Smart Audio is to enable your UART. So in my case, it's UART 1. So that's all set up. Uh, jump over to the CLI. Run set. And here you can see the new VTX parameters that are now in Betaflight 3.3. So it's it's just as simple as running the commands to set the band channel and the power the frequency is auto set once you configure your band and channel and um so the parameter kind of the details and stuff like that can be found here on this website it looks like it's um it's one of the developers pages from what i found on github so as you can tell the vtx band can be one through five as you know normal vtx channels one through eight uh, vtx power this will depend on your VTX and how much power output your VTX can do. Um, VTX frequency can be manually modified, um, but I wouldn't mess with it. Just every time I set it inside of Betaflight, it automatically pick the channel um, related to you know my channel or my band and channel. So um, the commands are fairly basic. So set underscore band space equals space four. And so in that case, it would set it to band F and channel six. So what that would look like in beta flight is set space VTX underscore band space equals space two and enter. And then you can do set space VTX underscore channel space equals space and you can go two as well. And then you would click save, hit enter. It would save to your 
uh, flight controller, save and reboot. And when you come back up, your VTX channels will now be what you have set up there. So yeah, so now you have the ability to set your VTX band channels and power from CLI using Smart Audio. So if you don't have an OSD like was the case with me, um, it's a it's a good way to get everything all set up. That way you don't have to solder any weird little buttons or, or anything like that. So, well, if this video helped you out, like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff, and we'll catch you next time.